Hey guys, Sean T. Phillips here with my August 18th DVD update, where I talk about all the DVDs and Blu-rays I received the review and talk about for you guys over the last two weeks or so. Like I always say, guys, if you enjoy these update videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Leave me comments below where you guys thought I told as I checked out and reviewed this update. Any titles coming up if you guys like my review for future updates and some of the DVDs and Blu-rays you guys have picked up recently. Now, the first one I got from Lionsgate. It's a pretty interesting movie, all done first-person style, kind of like Hardcore Henry. Has a video game kind of look as well, because the character has like this uh, earpiece kind of thing he sees through it like a thing he wears on his ear and he kind of sees through it as well so you kind of see stuff on the screen like um you know scanning the you know the surroundings and he could take calls and stuff through it but the movie stars uh dan stevens it's a movie called kill switch dan stevens was, was in you know recently in uh the beauty and the beast live action film i always think of him from the movie the guest he was really cool in that film this is kind of like a post-apocalyptic kind of movie because uh, Dan Stevens' character, he's like, gets recruited in to go to this kind of like program, this kind of space kind of program. And you don't exactly know what it is because like in the very beginning of it, you see him with his family and everything looks okay. But he ends up going into this program and it starts off like right after you see him with his family and then it cuts to immediately after. Something has happened and his, his ship is crash landed back to Earth. And when he's there, there's all kind of destructions. Things are like on fire. People are dead everywhere. Like there's like hardly anybody around you know something really bad has happened so it's kind of like cutting back and forth though to him you know in in this program finding out about it and then to now when things have all you know gotten destroyed and you kind of start to like find out more and more about exactly you know what he was doing and kind of what causes because when he comes back he doesn't really know why it's all like this and what has happened and he's also trying to find his family and figure out where they are and if they're all right and like you know if he can try and like fix what has happened here and like you know also has to deal with all these kind of crazy people who are who did survive kind of coming after him and going kind of crazy because it has sort of like a escape from LA kind of vibe as well with like the survivors that are there but like I said though this one is Kill Switch and pretty interesting one here and it has on here a feature out here on the visual effects as well as a commentary track with the director uh, the next one from Lionsgate as well is a movie called Inconceivable and this stars Gina Gershon and Nicolas Cage this is like the first movie they had been in together since Face Off because both of them were in the film Face of, I don't remember what role they both, uh, what Gina Gershon's character, if it was his wife. I can't remember. I haven't seen that movie in a really long time. Um, and so this one is called Inconceivable. And this is basically, though, about Nicolas Cage and his wife. And, you know, they've had all these problems, you know, with have, you know uh, his wife getting pregnant. She finally did. And, and they have a child. But they're trying to have another child as well. And they're kind of going through all the fertility and all those kind of problems going on. But then their one friend of theirs uh, introduces her to this friend that she met who's like her and her daughter. They don't really have anywhere to live because like you see in the very beginning of this movie, this woman like kills this guy and you don't know exactly what's happening. You can tell though this woman probably might be nuts. But you see her like, you know, kill this guy and you don't know exactly why and what had happened. But that that's the woman who you know, they, they introduce her to. And, uh, you know... Uh, Gina Krasarin's character, Nicholas Cage, like feel bad for her, and they're like, "Oh, well, you can stay with us. We have a guest house, so you can stay there, and um, you know, but you can also watch our child for us because we're dealing with like work and all that kind of stuff, and also the fertility stuff they're trying to go through. But they have all these kind of problems, and the woman who goes there to stay, though, you can tell though there's something really weird about her, and you can tell too she's there for like a real specific reason. She has something planned that she's doing, and she kind of knows more about these people than she lets on. It kind of has a, uh, the feel of that movie that was out recently called When the Bow Breaks. There's also been a couple other movies about this, like when you let someone stay in the house and you can kind of tell they're nuts. It was that kind of vibe thing. I always really liked Nicolas Cage. It was definitely cool to see him and Gina Gerson together in a new film. It has on here, though, a director's commentary track, uh, behind the scenes of Inconceivable, uh, uh, deleted scenes, as well as uh, cast and uh, crew interviews on this one. The next one here from Lionsgate as well. This one I really liked a lot, and I didn't know much about this one at all going into this. And it stars Dimitri Martin, who I, I know like mainly from stand-up comedy and stuff. And he actually wrote and directed this film. And it's him uh, and, and Kevin Klein plays his father. Uh, Mary Steenburgen is in this movie as well. And it's basically though about uh, Dimitri Martin's character, who is like this illustrator and. Um, you know, his mother recently died, and, you know, his father, like I said, is Kevin Klein, and his wife had died. So it's kind of both of them dealing with the grief process, and Kevin Klein tells Dimitri Martin, you know, that he's going to sell the family home because he can't live in there anymore, and he has all the memories of his wife, and, and but, you know, he's, uh, Dimitri Martin's really upset about this. He's like, well, that's where I grew up, and that's where mom was. You can't get rid of this place. So he's kind of going through a lot of problems, and he gets this um, offer to come to L.A. to kind of pitch his, his uh, illustrations for this, like, kind of 
kind of TV show, and he goes there to kind of escape because he's upset about his father wanting to sell this place, and he kind of needs to get away, and he goes there, and when he's there, he meets uh, Gillian Jacobs' character, and he kind of starts to like her, and he kind of goes there, and it's him kind of going around with her and doing some things, and then it cuts back and forth to, uh, you know, Kevin Klein's character, who is in New York trying to sell the house, and our Mary, St Mary Steen version plays the realtor, and they kind of have a thing that kind of like each other, so it's kind of about them and all their sets of problems and both of the ways they're kind of dealing with grief because both of them are really really upset about the whole thing and they're kind of both in a really bad place and like kind of trying to figure out how they're going to move on from what had happened but i really really thought this was a very very well done movie it has on here though a making of on the movie as well as uh some other featurettes and a, a q a though with dimitri martin on this but definitely give this one a chance guys i really like this one the next one here just want to let you guys know this one is going to be I just had the disc for this one, but this one is going to be on video on demand, um, you know, uh, September 1st, as well as it's going to have like a limited theatrical run as well. And this is a movie called Jackals. This is a pretty interesting movie. It, scar it stars Stephen Dorff, um, and the other actor was in like um, Doom Generation. I know he's going to be in the new uh, Day of the Dead remake. But it's basically, though, about these two guys who um, end up kidnapping this kid um, and bring him back to their his family. And you, and this kid, though, had basically been, like, totally brainwashed by this cult. And it's pretty much them trying to snap this guy out of it. And, like, these two the kidnappers are sort of trying to kind of do anything they can to kind of get the guy back. Because the family is like, where have you been? What has happened? And, like, the guy is acting kind of, the son is acting totally crazy. He's saying all this really crazy, weird stuff and all these kind of of cult words and all this kind of kind of, kind of crazy nonsense and they're sort of doing all they can the kidnappers to try and kind of bring him back and figure out exactly what's going on but you know essentially though kidnapping this guy since he was part of this cult it's sort of like um becomes sort of a home invasion type strangers film and like these cult members all kind of come and surround the house all wearing these masks and it's kind of them all in there trying to figure out and the family trying to figure out what they got themselves into in the entire like you know terrible situation that they're in but a pretty interesting one here and like i said this one is going to be on video on demand and um you know limited theatrical on, on september 1st this one though i did a full review of this one this one's from uh disney and this is the first uh 4k release from disney and it's you know gardens of the galaxy volume two so and i have like i said if you guys haven't seen it you know i put a link below for the full review of this one but just want to let you guys know about this one i'm also on tuesday definitely going to go to the stores and stuff and show you know all the uh you know exclusive versions of this one the next one here from Paramount and um, you know this is the 4k release of Baywatch and I saw this one in theaters as well I thought this was actually a fun movie this is one of those things though I never saw any episodes at all of the TV show so I can't relate it whatsoever to like you know if how, how similar it was to the show or if it was like it, similar at all because like I said I I don't think I had ever seen a full episode of Baywatch I, I've seen like little clips and stuff but never a full one of it at all and it's basically though D uh, Dwayne Johnson and you know Zac Efron and Zac Efron kind of comes to, um, you know, because Dwayne Johnson's like the head lifeguard. Of, and they're kind of like, you know... Um they're lifeguards, but they kind of act like they're cops because they're always kind of like investigating weird things that are going on the beach and kind of bad people who are up to no good and like drugs and all this kind of stuff. So they're kind of like um, doing way more than they should be because they kind of want to be cops in a weird way. But so they're like going kind of overboard what they you know do as lifeguards instead of just being lifeguards. They're kind of like anything that happens on the beach, they kind of act like it's theirs. But Zac Efron was a place his character was like this Olympian who kind of had some bad stuff happen to him and you know kind of has a bad rep now and no one really likes him anymore so he kind of comes to you know to try and get his image back up to work as a lifeguard there but you know they don't want to let him in there because he has to go through like lifeguard training and Zac Efron's character is like I don't want to go through this you should be happy I'm here I'm Olympian I've got all these medals so it's kind of about him trying to get you know past to be a lifeguard but then it's also about like these these drugs and stuff that are being sold around the beach and around the area and them kind of trying to investigate and the cops are like you know you need to stay out of this this is not what you're supposed to be doing you're supposed to be worrying about people who are drowning and stuff so it's all them and the other lifeguards trying to work together trying to figure out you know who is selling all these things and all this stuff is going on i i don't know i thought this is a really really fun movie this has on here though the um extended cut of the movie on this one 
And on the 4K disc, though, it has the theatrical and the extended, just so you guys know. Because sometimes when they have, like, the uh, 4K disc, it only has, like, the theatrical version. But the theatrical and extended are on the uh, 4K one. And then it also has um, some featurettes on here, um, making of, you know, doing on the stunts. It has deleted scenes and extended scenes on this one. But I thought this one, like I said, was a pretty fun movie here. And the next one I got from Anchor Bay is uh, Ash vs. Evil Dead. It's I, For some reason, I always used to think it was Ash vs. The Evil Dead, but it's Ash vs. Evil Dead. And this is the complete uh, second season of the show. And I think this is a really, really fun show. It's so cool, too, to see, you know, um, Bruce Campbell's character back playing Ash again. And it's basically, though, about him and these two people that he like was working with at his job. And they, they, they kind of left because, like, in the first season, he was kind of, you know, he ended up accidentally reading from that book of the Necronomicon. And then all the kind of demons and stuff were all coming back. And this is kind of him, you know, uh, without spoiling too much, it's pretty much just him and these kind of people that, were, that are with him, these two... Uh, Sky and this girl who are with him trying to kind of stop all the demons that kind of come up and trying to put things right because it's like uh because like you know um I think it's cool about this one, the show is, that kind of the demons and all these bad people are all, like, set, like, in regular kind of spots. Because in the other films, it was all kind of set in the cabins and then, you know, set in medieval times in um, Army of Darkness. But it's him, like, in Florida and all these states and stuff like that with all these demons coming everywhere. And the thing that's so cool about the show as well is it's super, super gory. They go to the total extreme with the gore and the gross out of facts and stuff. And I don't know, I just really love Bruce Campbell, and it's just, like, a really fun show. This is one of those ones, too, even if you haven't seen the first season, I think you'd still be able to pick up on it, at least what's going on for the most part. It's not one where you'd have to really know everything about it to you know be able to follow it. But it has on here, though, a bunch of features on here. Season 2, First Look, uh, Inside the World of Ash vs. Evil Dead, as well as a number of other featurettes on here, as well as commentaries on this. But a really, really fun show. Next one here from um, Anchor Bay as well. This is a series where I have not seen all the episodes. I've seen episodes here and there, a couple episodes of each season. And this is, you know, um, The Walking Dead, uh, the complete sixth season of the show. And this is, you know, I can't, I can't remember what the, the name of the character is here. Um... Uh, but the one who has, like, the bat character, like, who kind of came into this show, he's going kind of crazy. I, I, I should know, remember what his name was, but I've totally, like, blanked on it right now. Um... Yeah, it's good. No, it's Negan. Yeah, Negan, you know, who kind of comes in with this bad character. And um, basically, though, he's kind of taken over the group and he's kind of going crazy and he's like killing people off and stuff like that. But this is kind of um, the survivors of, you know, that, they, you know, are living in this community there dealing with him. And it's kind of like the whole community is kind of screwed up because of Negan's character. And it's also, and it's like, of course, it's like them all living there and then going around and you know, being like the survivors and stuff. Like I said, it's really, really hard to explain because I've not seen all the episodes of the show. I've only seen them here and there. But, you know, it's a fun, like, zombie show. I always liked, uh, you know, like what I've seen of it and has on here. Like, they always put lots of features on these releases, which is always cool. Has the lead and alternate scenes in here, uh, the making of The Walking Dead, in memoriam feature, like I said, commentary tracks on here, stuff on here about the writers and some of the top zombies on here. But a really, really f cool show. Like I said, just to let you guys know, this one is available now as well on. On Tuesday and the next one here from Anchor Bay this is a it was sort of a spin-off I, I believe sort of because it's like no none of the same people but it was a movie called the white queen a, a series called the white queen queen that was on stars this one is like, some of the same writers and people were behind this one this is called the um, the white princess and this is um you know it was a limited series one so this is like the complete series of the show and it's basically though about this one ruler who, the king who was uh, killed, and basically the new person that kind of comes in to take charge, and this one uh, woman who was like the princess was, you know, kind of promised to him, and it's kind of like about, like, the whole family drama about this girl who really doesn't want to have to be with this guy, and then all the kind of, because of the one king being killed, and the new person who's coming in, it deals kind of with all the turmoil with everybody, and like the, the disagreements and people getting killed and stuff like that, like not happy about who has kind of come into power and then about the girl and her family and how like and it's, it's kind of like all this like a character piece about all this stuff that's going on as a result though of the, the the new king kind of coming in but a pretty interesting series here though I guess and this is a show that was on stars and like I said it's sort of a follow-up to the white queen 
the next one here from um, Sony, and I'm going to put a link for you guys can get this one. This is from the uh, the Sony Choice Collection, which is a Burn on Demand release. And I'm really glad they put this out on Blu-ray. This is a movie as a kid. I watched this movie so many times. I've always really liked this movie. I know it wasn't like a top like reviewed movie or anything, but like as a kid, I always loved this one. It's a Elijah Wood film, and you know it's got lots of people in this movie. John Ritter was in this movie. Uh, Dan Aykroyd, Bruce Willis, John Lovitz. It's a movie called North. But like I said, I'm, I'm really happy this is on Blu-ray. This is basically though about um, it's like it's a funny concept. It's like uh, Eliza Wood's character really isn't happy with his parents. They kind of ignore him, and he doesn't really like them. And um, he ends up being able to because of that. Um, pick a new family so it's kind of him going around to um these other families and he has a certain amount of time that he has to find a new family it's him going around to these other families and and he goes to like a western family a family that's like in, in alaska and like you know there's some really ridiculous stuff of him like walking this long way to like because his grandfather's really old and they want to like you know what they want to get rid of their grandfather and like this weird texas family it's always eating all this weird meat plates. And I don't know. I, I really think this is a fun movie. And it's kind of, you know, it, I don't know. I've always really loved this movie. Like I said, this is a movie that I grew up watching as a kid all the time. It's just a really fun thing about him if he's going to try and actually find a new family and going around to all of them. Um, like, if you guys have seen this one, like, too, let me know. I always want love to know what you guys think of these movies. Because, like, like I said, that was the thing I always grew up with and always really loved. And the next one here is one that you guys know is available. Uh, you know, uh, Warner Brothers sent over a free copy of this one to check out. And this is the complete second season of Supergirl and I actually um, watched a lot of episodes of the first season of this one as well and this is out of all like the superhero ones I feel like this one definitely has a bit more of like a kid type feel to it like a kid friendly of the superhero type you know uh, live action shows because there's been a lot of these ones recently like Legends of Tomorrow and lots of different ones but this is about basically about the Supergirl character and it's kind of all the kind of um the you know the the enemies and stuff like that and are kind of kind of coming after her and kind of her coming into her own because she basically recently left her job and it's kind of, I don't know I just I just feel like this is a really fun show um, I feel like out of all the ones this definitely has the funnest feel of them to this this has on here though um, five featurettes on here uh, the Comic Con 2016 panel as well as Supergirl did you know uh, facts for fans uh, Supergirl aliens among us a conversation with um, Andrew Kit Krinsberg and Kevin Smith commentary track with Kevin Smith on Supergirl Lives. That's one thing that's cool is Kevin Smith has been directing a lot of episodes of these uh, DC series. Like he, I think he did some of The Flash and so I don't know. I just always think that's cool that he's been coming in and doing a lot of these. I definitely feel like at some point he's going to go and do a like a superhero feature film when he's going to direct it. I feel like it's going to come to that soon. Uh, the next one here are uh, Warner Archive titles and these are two um, Steve Martin films. The first one is um, uh, with, with Rick Moranis, and I hadn't seen this movie in a long time. It's a movie called My Blue Heaven, and this is basically though about Steve Martin's character, who is like this gangster who, um, you know, in the mob. And he's going to basically go to testify against somebody that did something bad. And um, Rick Moranis is kind of the guy because he goes into witness protection because of this. And, and he, Rick Moranis' character kind of has to watch him and keep him under wraps to get him to the um, court to do the talk about it and, you know, to basically testify against this guy. But, you know, Rick Moranis' character, I mean, Steve Martin's character doesn't really want to play along with any of this. And he has to change his name and he has to kind of stay in his house and do exactly what he's told. But he's kind of going around and messing things up and trying to kind of get organ like start up like schemes of like with some of the mobsters that he knows around the area that he gets moved to and he's definitely not doing what he's supposed to do he's getting like causing all these crimes and like all these kind of problems and Rick Brannis is trying to kind of deal with all this and just get him to New York to do the te to testify but he also sort of changes Rick Brannis's character who's really like kind of all like prim and proper with everything he does and is always worried about everything I don't know I really think this is a fun film I, the one thing from Warner Archive I'm hoping so much that it gets announced at, at some point in the next year or so, which I would love, is uh, Nothing But Trouble. Because they've been putting out a lot of movies from around that same time. So I'm just hoping at some point that's one that they release. Because that's like such a cool movie. Uh, the next one is another one. This is a really, really quirky movie called The Man with Two Brains. This is from the Archive Collection as well. This is one I had, another one. I had, probably hadn't watched this one in like 
probably 15 years or something. I, and like, I don't know why it's been so long because it's a really funny, I, and I, I feel like too, it was definitely felt very ahead of its time with some of the humor in this. But it's basically about um, Steve Martin who is this brain surgeon and, and all the surgeries are done because he invented this like screw technique about just unscrewing someone's head to do the brain surgery. So it's really ridiculous. But he ends up um, saving, you know, um, you know, saving Kathleen Turner's, Turner's character because she had like this thing that happened to her. So he ends up doing brain surgery on her. But Kathleen Turner's character is basically kind of marrying men just to kind of like kill them and get their money. And that's sort of what it is. So she ends up, you know, um, acting like she likes Steve Martin after she comes out of surgery and kind of starts hitting on her and stuff. Of course, though, she's kind of just strooting him along to kind of get him to marry her so she can basically have all this money and she's kind of planning on how she's going to kill him <laughs> that's sort of what it is and like because she doesn't want to sleep with him at all it's all these awkward stuff about him never sleeping with his wife and then her just going i have a headache and all these kind of ridiculous stuff but it also deals too with this mad scientist guy who is like t has all these brains in a vault and steve martin like falls in love with the one brain and it's just a really really quirky funny movie and this is one of those movies too like there's a song in this and once you hear this song you're never going to stop thinking about this song. But definitely a really fun one here. The next one here from RLJ Entertainment is a movie called The Evil in Us. And this is a really cool uh, cover on this one. And this is basically, though, about a group of friends who are coming to, you know, together for, like, a 4th of July weekend celebration. And, like, you see throughout this movie, though, cutting back and forth of them at the celebration, but then at this, like, weird test facility. And you see, like, these people in there going totally nuts and, like, crazy and stuff. And what ends up happening, though, is... Uh, the one friend there had like got exposed to this kind of drug that he's there and he ends up taking it and it's kind of about it's got like sort of a cabin fever kind of feel to this because like the um the one guy there goes like absolutely, kind of like you see in this kind of facility, goes absolutely crazy and starts attacking everybody. And it's kind of like the people in there, like if they get like bitten, so they get they're getting affected by it, and they're kind of just going in absolutely nuts and like trying to kill each other. And it's kind of them all in this in this house, you know, you know, with all kind of going crazy here and there and like going after each other. And like I said, it definitely has that kind of cabin fever fever type vibe to this one, and like a super super gory one as well. But a really, really fun, like, you know, just kind of going absolutely nuts movie about these friends in this cabin trying to survive and figure out exactly how they're going to get out of this situation, exactly what is causing this and what, you know, what is happening here. And like I said, too, you know that they're, that these, it's, they're involved with some kind of a drug thing because you see back and forth, though, in this facility, this stuff that's going on. Uh, the next one here uh, from a company called um, High Octane Pictures. And I think this is one of their first releases, I believe. And it's a movie called The Answer. And I didn't know a lot about this one going into this. I really love the, the cover to this because it's this weird kind of character that was kind of making it remind me of like... I don't know, I couldn't think of what it was, but they were wearing this kind of weird like... Maybe like The Wrath a little bit, like the Charlie Sheen movie. And there was like another movie, like sort of similar looking kind of character, but it's basically though about this guy who ends up getting this like letter from his, you know, his mother. He hadn't heard from his, no, it, was his it was from his, I think it was his mother, or his father, but he hadn't heard from his parents in years because like something bad had happened to them and the father had kind of gone missing when he was a kid. And it's pretty much though about um, this guy who gets this thing, and the second he gets this type of letter, though, people kind of start coming after him, and they come after him at work, and they start killing everybody that's connected to him. And it's him and this one girl that he meets at work, and she's kind of because he kind of kind of is going out with her, sort of. They sort of start to sort of see each other, and it's pretty much though these characters are coming after him and like killing everybody around him, and you kind of know that because this letter was sent and like the parents had kind of vanished and what had happened to them, it's like not a good thing so for some reason they're all after him and he's kind of trying to figure out exactly what his parents were kind of trying to tell him and what he's trying to find and it's kind of him and this girl kind of going around of course though because everyone's kind of dying around him it's all in the news that like this guy is killing everybody they all think he's involved with all of this but it's really just these these group of these people wearing these weird masks and like kind of like motorcycle type suits coming after him and they kind of throw these weird like uh, things at the people and stuff I, I this definitely had like a throwback to like an 80s kind of movie and it's a mix too of like sci-fi kind of action horror it's kind of a lot of genres all mixed together but i really found this to be a pretty fun movie here uh the next one here 
from, uh, and I'll put a link as well for you guys can get this one. This is another um, Burn on Demand release, and this is from The Orchard. And this is a movie um, that Pat Healy, you know, who was in that movie called like Compliance and um, a bunch of different movies. I always, he's always really good, and he was also in that one horror movie recently when he was like, this crazy guy with this gun. I can't remember what his name is. He's been in lots of different movies. But this is a movie called Take Me. And he kind of, wor Pat Healy's character, works as this guy who kind of stages abductions to kind of, ch people, if they're kind of like addicted to food or addicted to drugs or any kind of things they have kind of problems with or that they're kind of obsessed with or trying to kind of get over, he kind of abducts them and you know, he gets paid to do this, kidnaps and abducts them for like eight hours at a time and kind of tortures them and kind of tries to get them to change like this one guy who's like eating too much he does like kind of finds ways to kind of ruin food for this guy and try and kind of kind of trap you know uh, kind of it's a weird thing that he does but this one woman ends up contacting him saying I want you to kidnap me for three days no matter what and he has, she has all these kind of things that she wants him to do like slap her and all this kind of stuff and he's like well I don't really do that kind of thing and I only do this for eight hours and so she's like well I'm gonna give you like I think it was like five thousand dollars something like that but of course though he you know agrees to do this but the second he kidnaps this woman there's something really weird going on because like it does it's starting to seem like the woman that he's kidnapped isn't the person that he was supposed to kidnap. It was like he doesn't know exactly what's going on because she's the way she's acting and it's seeming way more real to him. So he doesn't exactly know what's going on. So it's kind of like him gets put in a situation of not knowing what he's supposed to do. And it, and he's also like questioning if this is like the right thing he's supposed to be doing in his life, like kidnapping people like this. I really thought this was a really fun, crazy movie here. And like Pat Healy, you know, directed this one as well. The next one he, ones here are both from um, Vision Film and these are, you know, there's going to be a third one of these as well. And these are uh, A Dog Gone Christmas and A Dog Gone Hollywood. And these have the same cast members for the most part in both the films. But they're kind of like, it was almost like Return of the Living Dead 2 where it was like the same cast members but playing kind of different roles in them. So it's kind of, I always kind of think that's funny too when you have like the same people doing like, but like kind of like not the same characters. Uh, Dog Gone Christmas though about this dog that was being uh, tested like in this medical kind of like in like a weird medical type train and he has like telekinesic powers and talk to people through his mind and move things and all these kind of stuff and the dog ends up escaping from the the train and he ends up you know uh, finding this family who kind of takes him in but then it's like these agents who are trying to find the dog and get the dog back and all these kind of like bumbling problems about them coming after them and the friends kind of trying the kids all and their friends trying to keep this dog safe and the dog like I said can kind of talk to them through their mind uh, the second one uh, was a follow-up like I said, it was the same dog for the most part. Like it was the same dog, but like I said, it was it doesn't didn't totally connect to the other ones because it was the same kids, but in totally different roles. And this one is about a dog who's like a dog star, like really popular dog, and they kind of like. Um, they're really mean to the dog though, because they're all they kind of see this dog as kind of like a money, like just making money and stuff. And the dog ends up escaping from the set of this TV show he's on. And the star of the show is like, well, if this dog isn't here, I'm not going to be on the show anymore because the star of the show is the dog, and I I work alongside this dog. So it's kind of him, and then like all the other people that kind of represent the dog, trying to track down this dog and figure out where he is. And of course, he finds his other kids and kind of is with them hiding out and stuff. So it's all these kind of like adventures and stuff about the dog and stuff and these people trying to come after him and this actor who's like doesn't want to lose his job trying to find the dog I don't know I think these are some really really fun uh, Jim Wynarski you know these are totally very different movies he's done a lot of kids movies recently but you know I always think of him from like um, Chopping Mall and stuff um like I said, though, and I believe there's going to be a third one of them coming out, I think, this Christmas, I believe. This one here from um, um, N-Circle, I think it's N-Circle Entertainment, and this is a really cool release because I love this head that it's set inside of, and it's the Gumby movie on Blu-ray, and it's kind of inside of this head like this. It opens up, and you see, like, the two discs in here, and it's got a DVD and a Blu-ray, and I was, I was wondering how this was going to look on Blu-ray. It looks amazing. Like, this transfer on this movie is so good. This movie came out in 95. But it, I was looking into this. It was actually like finished, I think, in like 93, but had a hard time getting a release when it first came out. And this is, you know, I, as a kid, though, like Gumby, I watched Gumby so many times. I remember like, um, 
watching the, the VHSs of it all the time and those songs that are getting stuck in my head. But like I watch them so much. And this is basically the movie of Gumby because this is like the Gumby kind of came back in the 80s and that was the one I remember watching a lot. And then, you know, they came back with this film. I think this was like the last that had ever been of Gumby after this. I don't think there had been any more Gumby. And I, it was definitely something I feel like might come back someday, though. But it's basically about Gumby, who's in a rock band. And these, like, the the blockheads are kind of, like, taking over the farms and the world that he let goes. Because he goes inside of books and stuff. And um, he's trying to kind of find a way to raise money with his rock band to kind of save these farms. These The blockhead characters are taking over and buying out and stuff and kicking out the people in. They, these movies, too, they always have a slight... Slightly, slightly, and even as a kid, I thought this kind of freaky, creepy vibe a little bit. In in Blu-ray, it looks like you can see like the detail, especially the human characters, and like the way they do the women's voices and stuff. They're like, oh yes, it's like there's just something unintentionally sort of scary a little bit about certain aspects of it. But it absolutely looks so amazing. Like they definitely transferred this from the film. It looks so good for the you know the release of this. And the last one here from Mill Creek, and this is one I remember this. And this was on, and I and I remember watching this one, and it's like been like a really lost show, sort of like the Dumb and Dumber one. I don't think this had ever been released on anything. This show, it might maybe like random VHS finds of this, but this is Jumanji, the animated series, and this is basically though about the kids who you know who play Jumanji, and they go, and they're playing the game. And it's kind of them going into different kind of scenarios and getting kind of trapped in the game, and. Um, Robin Williams characters in here as well. It's, of course, it's all different characters doing the voices and stuff. Tim Curry is in here doing a voice. Um, the one voice of Patrick from SpongeBob is in here. Um, it's just a really fun kid show here. Like I said, I, this came out I think in like '95. This was on, and I didn't even know that this ran for three seasons. So it has all 40 episodes of this show. It's definitely cool that Mill Creek is putting out some much more obscure kind of lost shows like this. I, it'd be interesting if they put out like Dumb and Dumber because that was another one, and Ace Ventura because they these are they haven't done a lot of these recently where they take a show you know a movie a movie that was really successful and make a, like a kids cartoon of it but like I said they did like that for Ace Ventura as well and the last one I got here from uh, Art Sportation Films and I just have the disc of this because it's going to be going up on video on demand you guys can watch this one and then it's going to be I think the official DVD and Blu-ray release is October and this is a Christmas slasher movie called Red Christmas and this stars D. Wallace Stone it's basically about D. Wallace Stone and her family all getting together for the holidays and um, you know that something like because he kind of cuts to like somebody dressed like this really creepy kind of Santa type costume. You see him going around like killing people and you kind of know that he's like heading over to the family and you kind of don't know exactly why but it becomes like this like real crazy throwback 80s style slasher film though about D. Wallace and her family all getting like attacked by this Santa guy and kind of trying to survive Christmas with all this stuff. It's just a really you know, creepy throwback slasher film here and this one you know is available Available though on be available on video on demand. But anyway, though, guys, that's all for this update video. Thanks so much for watching, and subscribing, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.